Hello, everybody. Hola. It's Tuesday, 4 o'clock. I've got Bill Murray here. I mean, Josh Rout and Beard. I Welcome. Dressed up for the he dressed season. up. We both dressed up. A friend and I were talking today, and she was like, you know, at the beginning of this, they would have meetings, their Zoom meetings, and people had their hair fixed and made like they were going to work, and it has slowly transitioned to this a little more casual wear. But I did give a special bun today. It's a little lower than the high buns, so a little classier. Hmm. Mm, maybe not. There's a hair sticking out. Anyway. Yeah, that might be debatable. Yeah, that's debatable. <laughs> so, welcome to our conversation with Josh. I feel like we need opening music. We need to get Evan no. to record some on his... It's very humid outside today. Beard's fluffy. Um, Get Evan to record like a little opening. Or not. Okay. So, um... We went through a couple of different topics. Um, in my mind, we started with one, and then following yesterday's announcement with, um, I mean, I think that we all expected, but needed to hear it, that we weren't, that the kids would not be going back to school, teachers would not be going back to school, and just the whole big collective loss that everyone is dealing with and really what has you know pulled at my heart is the kids and the loss that they're experiencing because you know frankly there's some big stuff that happens at the end of a school year especially for seniors yeah like it's a big deal there's there's a lot of um there's a lot of grief happening, a lot of feelings of sadness, and and um, they're not getting closure on a lot of things. And I would say that's for a lot of kids. Like for Evan, for those of us, for those of you who know us, know that for Evan, we've actually been homeschooling Evan since ninth grade, but he's dual enrolled, so he goes to band and plays tennis at the public school, and then he's done his academics at home. It's been really great for us, a good experience. He's had a little bit of the best of both worlds. So the actual homeschooling piece is not that new for us, but he's still really experiencing some loss. He was like, man, that means we won't have our spring band concert, and he plays the French horn, by the way. And he was really excited about the piece of music they were playing, and he's bummed like just bummed and he was in the musical and the spring musical you might have to talk louder you're talking really quiet the spring musical okay thank you he was talking very quiet anywho um so that there's a lot and me saying those things like he won't get to be in the musical or he won't get to play music um i think sometimes we might think, well, there's a lot bigger things happening in the world than not getting to do those things. But that's what we want to talk about today. Yeah. Is we might think that, but as a parent and as a friend, as a partner, Josh, what, what should we do when those conversations arise? When our child comes to us and, or they're, expressing that they're sad because the musical is not happening like what are some things that we should be mindful of well the the main thing is that that it's relative suffering right so um suffering for one person is not suffering for another person right that doesn't mean that the person that i mean we're not dealing with starvation right now we're not dealing with like this uh like extremely horrible things but that doesn't mean what we're feeling isn't valid and that it isn't something that has to, should be addressed right we don't ever just say well i i can't complain because i least, at least you know i still have all my arms and legs you know that it's things like that right it's it's relative suffering so the idea that 
Um, so there's a couple of concepts. One is that when something is important to someone you love, like your partner or, or your child, it should be important to you. Whether or not you value that thing or think it is of value, it should, it should be important to you because it's important to the other person. So even though I'm not a fan of like yard work, it's important to Amy and so it's important to me. And so like I, I now can find joy in working out in the yard because I know it's important to her and I find joy in it, you know? Um, where playing video games might be important to some, it's maybe not to someone else because they see no value in it. <clears throat> this was a moment to like um, so, dig. So, um, but the idea is if it's important to someone, then you should be, you should have value, it should be valuable to you because you love this person. And so saying that, that's the concept that we have with kids, right? It's, it's just like when they come to you and they're feeling this loss and feeling this, oh my gosh, you know, our answer shouldn't be, well, at least, you know, we have a home and shelter. It's like, okay, right. yeah, but that doesn't... But that doesn't take away yeah. their their feelings of like, this is a real bummer. Or, or the, the classic, well, back in my day, we used to have to da da da, you know, or my kids are like, God, you're so mean sometimes. If I was to say, oh, well, you should have seen how I grew up and I had this horrible life and da da, it's, it means nothing to them because luckily they didn't have that life or they're not suffering like that, right? But that doesn't mean what they're feeling isn't valid. So I think sometimes putting our suffering in pers into perspective is good t to some degree. Um, and yeah. you do that by saying, I know that you're, you feel like you're missing a lot, but let's, and, and I totally understand it. And you, you process that with them, but then maybe a follow-up is like, why don't we like, even though that we don't have that, let's talk about what we do have and what we do that we are grateful for. Yeah. And so rather than saying, well, your suffering means nothing because look what we have, you know? And so but validating that. Yeah, validating the loss and just saying, yeah, Because it's a big know? deal. Yeah. I mean, it's a big deal to all the kids. It's a big deal to teachers that they didn't get to finish the year with their kids. It's, it's big stuff. And honestly, also, I, th I was thinking through this, and this is an opportunity to practice modeling empathy. So how do we teach empathy? We show it. And so this is an opportunity, like Josh said, for us to be like, wow, you know, that's, that is really hard. Like that sounds hard. And yeah, what you're going through, that's, that's tough. And, um, and just helping to show that. I mean, that's how we teach our kids, right? Yeah. Yep. Um, and so, yeah, I think being mindful of how we respond, um, there was a, there is this person that I mention on every, <laughs> every time, but um, Brene Brown calls it comparative suffering to where, and you called it relative suffering. Yeah. So basically the same thing, but basically not feeling shame and not feeling ashamed of how we feel about our situation. Now, when we look at other people, yeah, gosh, we can, that's how we show empathy too. And that's another way to teach kids empathy is to, to show sympathetic feelings for what others are going through, you know, and, and to provide this, the best way that we can that support or whatever through the struggle. So by providing, you know, support and showing empathy to our children, then we can continue and show how we can provide that to others. I, I mean, you're seeing it everywhere right now. If, you've, if you're on social media at all, you're seeing how people are parking outside the hospitals and honking their horns and waking up all the sick people. And <laughs> no, I'm just teasing. It's an amazing act. Um, and, um, but show, trying to reach out and show love. So that's how we can take loss and grief and then teach how we show empathy to others. First, providing empathy to our loved ones, and then showing how we can um, provide empathy and support to those around us. 
this is an opportunity, I think, to teach some really incredible skills to our kids. Yeah. Um, yeah, definitely. It's, it's an opportunity that like, we're probably not going to have uh, ever again. This is a pretty monumental event, a historical happening. Um, yeah. And so, yeah, we do have a unique opportunity. And so, um, so, so I think it's important once we validate and, and talk about the emotion and process it with them, that there's this follow-up of, of some different questions, right? Not, not ideas. We don't, you know, we sometimes as parents, we think we have the answers, right? And this is how, what they should be doing. But it's incredible what happens when we let the kids come up with their own solutions, right? So, so someone who's suffering like, oh, I just, you know, I won't have graduation. I won't have this. And my son, God, we had this really cool band uh, music. And we looked, two of our friends looked at each other and we were excited that we were going to get to play. So questions like, well, yeah, that's, that sucks. You're not going to be able to play it in band. Do you think you guys can get together somehow and each play that music? So you're still playing it together or, or how, how could you like yeah. let them think creatively yeah. on some solutions? Like, wow, it stinks that, that we aren't going to have graduation or wow, it stinks that you don't get to see your friends right now. And so what do you think are ways that we could connect? What do you think are ways, I don't know, involve them. I like that, Josh, involve them in some processing through, we aren't going to, necessarily gosh I wrote a really good it's my very own thought hold on <laughs> as I was pondering oh look at that this is a quote by Amy Rout what do you want it we can't replace because I was thinking like we're not going to ever be able to replace the experience of going to the the big huge arena and walking on the stage if that doesn't happen but we can have an opportunity to create other memories. So the quote of the day is, we can't replace, but we can create. Good job. <laughs> Thank you. So You can add, you know, Amy Rout, whatever <laughs> you want. No, but I just thought that's, that's, that's the, the beauty in this opportunity. We're not going to replace those experiences missed. We're not going to be able to, to fix that. But we can definitely provide opportunities to create some other kind of memory. Um, to, what did you say that these kids, these seniors are going to be? You were saying something the other day. Anyway. Oh, it's the seniors. I mean, they have this, they're a part of this historical event yeah. right so when they're looking back and I mean they don't and, feel that right now no yeah but, <laughs> so but the them. opportunity to, to say you know to say do you know what's incredible is that when you have kids and you look back on their graduation what you're going to be able to tell them about your experience and your back graduation. in my day exactly I... <laughs> but the idea is like you are this is historical so try to figure let's like Talk to your friends about how you can make your graduation special or unique or yeah. um, because it, it really will be. This is a historical event and you're yeah. a part of it and it's it's tragic, but also, you know, a lot of yeah. incredible, incredible things come from tragedy. So, um, yeah. There's but, one other thought I had. Sorry, were you going to say something? Nope. So the other piece that I thought, okay, opportunity. um besides teaching empathy is we also have, um, well, this is going to naturally kind of teach our kids this persistence or resilience or grit or show them that they have strength inside. And so that's something that I think is important to focus on is that you're really strong. Like this is a hard thing. And, and you're strong and it's okay to cry and, and allow this safe space for kids to express emotion for our young ones, for our teenagers, whoever it is, just um, give them that op opportunity to, to express it, but also let them know like you're a strong person and, and that's what it takes to kind of stick something out. So, and also the, the whole idea of 
creating or coming up with with solutions is that um, it's okay to to have these feelings, but when it becomes something you kind of wallow in and allow that thing to, you know, not have you get out of bed or not engage in activities or, you know, cause some prolonged depression. That That's when it's an issue. And that's why uh, becoming solution focused is really important because we can all, too much time everywhere is spent on the problem, right? I'm sure you've all sat with through meetings or therapy sessions or where all that's talked about is the problem. Well, we all know there's a problem. So the more time you spend talking about the problem, it gives it's the less time you spend talking about the solution. Yeah. And what is it? Uh, complain or discussing a problem without a solution is called whining. So like what you do is you say, God, I know that's is really difficult. Allow the feelings to happen and then start asking those questions that will take them out of that negative uh, loop of this, I can't believe this is horrible, I can't get da 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 And you just say, so what are you going to do about it? What can you do about it? Yeah, with our and kids, he's always called that the, so what are you going to do about it? Therapy. Yeah. yeah. So he'll... Yeah. So he'll, the question is, when you catch yourself in this negative loop, like, oh, this is horrible, look, it's like, okay, yeah, you know that already. So what are you going to do about it? And yeah. then the next question is, what can I do about it? And if, and that's where you say, if you need help, come in that, what can I do about it? If you get to that stage, come talk to me and let me, maybe we can brainstorm or call your friends. Um, but so the first question to get out of that negative problem focused loop is what, what are you going to do about it? And what can you do about it? So, and right. I catch myself in it all the time. I'm like, Oh, and then I'm like, so, so what are you going to do about it? So yeah. what are you going to do about it? And I just... That's my immediate answer, so it hope, hopefully forces you to think about a solution and not the problem anymore. You have one other um, really good... We always say we're going to keep these short, and then we can't. Um, so the other thing that I know I've heard Josh say to people... Can I give away your therapy secrets? Don't drink and drive? No. <laughs> yeah, that's definitely one. Um, <laughs> the one that you will say when somebody... Um, Basically, if somebody comes with a problem, but they don't know what to do about it, he'll say, if you had a friend, yep. so, do you know what I'm saying? Yep. I'm going to let you say it since it's... I mean, so, with adolescents, this is especially helpful, and it helped with you as well, because the, the concept is that we're, we're the professional in our lives, and oftentimes we know what the answer is, but sometimes we're too emotionally there's too much of this emotional haze for us to see clearly the answer. So in session, what I've done where I've had this girl come in and boyfriend's cheating and he's horrible to them, not treating them good, da, 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 but they love him. And da. so anyway, the next session I come back and I'm like, okay, wait, before we start, I need to ask you a question. I have this girl that I'm seeing. And then I basically just give them their problem. What they explained to me, I was like, what should I tell her to do? And they're like, oh, leave him. Like, he's garbage. Like, don't stick around. And then I say, well, that's you. You know, <laughs> this girl I'm talking about is you. Because they already know the answer. So that's... Well, what would you tell your friend? Yeah. So your so... friend comes to you and says, God, this is going on. What would you say? And, and So that's yeah. a good technique you used to use for somebody. Yeah. That came out really... Um, okay. Any last words? We'll be back next week. We really would love to hear from you on topics that you're interested in. Um, we're really thinking about it through the week. Um, and, but I do have one little quote and there's, I have a few favorites. Fred Rogers is another, I know I've used his, but he has, he said at one time about developing effort and persistence, um, that above all, I think that the willingness and the courage to keep on trying develops best if there's someone close by who can lend us some of the strength we do not have yet within ourselves. And I think that's where we all are, is those that we're close to, our children, our teenagers, our partners, our co-workers, whoever it is, we, we need to be the strength to help each other get through this um, and to, to help help build that courage inside of them. Because I promise you that 
those people that are posting how awesome things are <laughs> are feeling the same on Facebook and you're seeing them going, God, why can't I? Those people need strength too. And they are going through the exact same thing we are. And they would love to hear from you, um, a friend, you know, just to, to talk and yeah. lend each other strength. Cause yeah, I, I like that. Let's just lend each other some strength. Um, and remember the quote of the day, we can't replace but we can create. <laughs> Love it. Thank you, everybody. Yeah. We hope you have a wonderful week. We'll be back next Tuesday. Myself, Beard, Josh, Bill Murray. The dogs were very quiet today. We're very appreciative. It's nap time. Um, we will see you next week. Bye. Bye.